everybody and welcome back to Unitrader. Today we will be taking a look at the VWAP. That's right, everybody's favorite very wet as oh uh, wait a second uh, volume weighted average price. Oh, mind out of the gutter. Anyhow, before we get started, I just want to say that there's a I've seen a scammer trying to uh, contact people in the comments. Uh, that is not me. I will never contact you uh, asking or sharing my WhatsApp number, nor will I ever provide to you specific financial advice because I'm not a financial advisor, and nor will I accept money from anyone. So if anybody's asking you for anything, it ain't me. And having said that, I am not a financial advisor, and this is not financial advice. We're doing this strictly for educational purposes. All right. So let's get into it. The reason I'm going to do a video on this, uh, it's because the VWAP is both an indicator and a tool. And all I mean by that is you can find one in the indicators. And if we come over to the trend line tools, we can actually find uh, the anchored VWAP at the bottom. So the VWAP is really all about the anchor. So I'm just going to turn on my VWAP here. And Mine, I, I like to have my VWAP bands open. So this, the blue line is the VWAP, the volume weighted average price. And you notice that at every market open, it resets. So that is the anchor of the, the uh, uh, default settings of the indicator, okay? So this is how I like to use mine, just I kind of, like to use it as a, a range sort of a moving average kind of thing and also I like to anchor off the tool aspect of it from different highs and lows so for example with the anchored VWAP I would pick the recent low here of uh, 330 September 7th hey come on and there you go. So from the last low, there is our anchored VWAP. So this is going to give us uh, some degree of uh, reaction, almost always. Hey, come on now. Come on. Come on, magnet. There you go. So if we were to uh, start looking here, wow, magnet tool is really fun today. Come on. So, hey, man, twitchy. All right, so we're not finding any sort of confluence with a fib pull. Not from that point anyhow, but if we start moving around, start looking to where it kind of gets more impulsive, we might start getting a bit closer to the golden pocket now. Take that with a grain of salt, right? So, so not only do we take that low, I'm on a 15 minute chart, let me just zoom out here a bit to the four hour. Okay, we could take this low. Also, you're going to be wanting to take some anchored VWAP from the highs and you could take multiple pulls from these and see if you start to find some sort of confluences but it's pretty interesting how price is starting to really bunch up here so this could potentially be looking at a pretty strong support level somewhere here in the future but again we're always going to be looking for confluence right so let me just get that fib pull back up here and uh, we've got this VWAP from the high here lined up perfectly almost with the 3A2. So if we come back and test the 3A2 and bounce off, uh, what do we know about the 3A2 is that it, it is an indicator of a pretty strong move. So could be the case. Or if we blow through it, it can show us uh, some signs of weakness, which is kind of what everybody's trying to figure out right now. Strong or weak, strong or weak. And the longer we kind of just sit around this area here, uh, the less information we're getting. 
But let's keep in mind, today is the CPI release. So uh, at 8.30 uh, New York time, uh, Big Daddy Pal is going to come out and give uh, the inflation uh, projections. So, not projections, the actual, the actual rate. <clears throat> so that is how you use the anchored VWAP. Like just pull them from everywhere uh, as long as it's highs or lows and you know look for confluence look f for other things could be pitchforks could be channels could be and look at that we almost rejected off of that from this high so yeah look look just you, you know pull them everywhere and look for other tools to use with them so I'm gonna give you an example here of uh, a great trade, a great short that I took using the VWAP last week. Here we go. So September 6th. I'm just gonna pull a quick fib here. And I'm going to unhide my VWAP. That was not the fib I wanted to pull. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to put on my volume profile as well here, just so we can get an understanding of what we were looking at. But I'm going to change the settings quick. Oh, I don't need to. That's right. I've already done that. Okay. Okay, so this is what the volume range profile looks like. And we've got our VWAP here. And we were bouncing in between this point of control and the value area high. And then we break under the VWAP. So VWAP traders, they'll generally just... Uh, you know, if, if price is above the VWAP, they'll look for longs, especially if it trade comes back to the VWAP, they'll look to long off of it. And if it's underneath, they'll look to short. Uh, I don't really trade the VWAP that way. I like to use it more for confluence, but you know, you start using it and use it the way you find best. So we had here this, this pretty tight range in between the daily point of control or the developing day. It wasn't over yet and the value area high of the developing day and then we uh, we break down so once we broke down I was looking for a short and it was because we were just in such a, a downward trend and then we had consolidated here and really didn't do much so I was feeling not bearish but I really thought that we were gonna come down and test the the lows again or at least put in some sort of a double bottom, a W pattern, something like that. Uh, and it worked out in the end, but you know, nothing's guaranteed. So as soon as we broke below, that's when I started looking for my short. And you see, we came off of the lower band and we come back up. And as soon as that rejected off of the lower band of the VWAP, I start to look for my fibs. So I pulled a fib. Oh, I'm just gonna take this off of auto, open this up so we can get a clearer picture. So there's my fib from the recent high to the recent low, and the VWAP was right in the middle of the golden pocket. So also had the point of control just above and the 786 just above. So I entered a short position here off of the VWAP. I should have taken it a little bit further back off of the 6.6. Well, I shouldn't have. I took it off the VWAP and it, and it played out really nice. And I had my stop loss just above the 7.86. Because if we lost the point of control in the 7.86, then we were going to be looking at potential longs, you know, come back to retest the VWAP and, and back up. And uh, it played out pretty nicely. 
In fact, it played out really nicely all the way to the low. And so as I was also looking at the swing failure pattern, that was my target once we got into that. I really wanted to take those, those lows, and we did. So that is uh, one way you can use the VWAP. There's a lot of different ways to use the VWAP. you got to kind of feel comfortable with your own uh, style. Uh, that's the way I use it. So if we, even yesterday, I mean, yesterday was a pretty decent day. You'll notice that these get quite a bit of respect to the band. So you can definitely develop uh, good scalping strategies using the VWAP. And once you see these sort of signs of strength, you know, there was a pretty big volume here. Let me just get my PVSRA up here. You know, there's, there's pretty decent volume around here, a lot of volatility. And then we, we get this lull and then a spike up in volume and we claim the VWAP, test the upper band, and then we come back down with pretty decent volume as well. But uh, this this move, it was a bit sketchy, I have to say. It was a, Then we come back up on relatively low volume, and then we had big volume, one big volume candle, but it didn't really do much, you know. It, it, it was just a stopping volume candle. And then we come back down, hit into the VWAP, and it was a very nice trade. That was a huge trade. The problem I have with trading just the VWAP is uh, is they're really more scalps than anything else, you know. So I will use it for confluence for for uh, scalps and quick day trades, right? And sometimes those will run into huge winners. But uh, the 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 challenge is really projecting projecting sure projection. So. Where are you going to take profits, you know? As this is a scalp entry, I would look for the first band and then the second band. Uh, that would be it. Or if you have something else in mind, you know, like you're looking at a macro picture and you're just using this as a, an entry tool to find the best possible entries, that would be much different, right? So you have to incorporate this into the game plan in a way that uh, that makes sense to you. and remember to project because you have to have that plan you know like yep take that uh the other the, the the short i took i took profits really quick in on september 6th because although i i wanted lower i wanted to see lower like what i want and what happens have nothing to do with reality right i uh, i have learned that many times but so i took some profits relatively quickly moved my stop loss up to break even and uh, then it just turned into a, a mega trade so great trading last week great trading this week too um, and now here we are kind of just sitting around waiting for daddy Powell to bring the the news inflation good or bad let's see uh, anyhow guys that is going to wrap it up uh, please leave a like comment and subscribe i'm also thinking about starting to do a daily video i didn't think i was going to get 150 subscribers uh, i didn't think i'd get any personally but uh so i'm thinking about doing an actual daily update where we take a look at uh, the exo charts or the order flow uh also uh just kind of looking at the levels that i'm interested in for the day and the dangers for the day if you're interested in that comment below uh, and uh, we'll see about getting that started. All right. Thanks so much, guys. You have a great day. Happy paper trading and be well.